Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Exceptional Conservative Show or the Exceptional Conservative Network live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation. First to the Republican and then the Socialist. Thank you, Mary. Mary is telling me right now. Mary Brockman is my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me. You will be dismissed. So I'm going to you sharp this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a very special guest this particular evening. Joe Rice Johnson III, Chairman of the Republicans Overseas in Russia and the Republic of Georgia, will be joining us to talk. Former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn and President Donald Trump's impact on foreign nations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are those who, some, for some odd reason, uh, believe that what happened to National Security Advisor Mike Flynn, Flynn, or forgive me, the former National Security Advisor, is so detrimental that the Trump administration should just quit, call it a, a loss, uh, and install Bernie Sanders as president. I think we're getting a little carried away, people. I really believe that. I uh, want to also uh, thank the good people at American Conservative Union. They have approved TECN covering CPAC 2017. And I I must say this. Uh, I am uniquely amazed that they even approved me covering it. <laughs> and yes, I have been invited to CPAC 2017. And I will have to check my schedule to see if I can attend that. Uh, however, Shannon Wright, Mike Wright from uh, The Right Way in the Morning, uh, Shannon and Mike, Melanie Collette from Money Talk with Melanie, and also in the afternoon drive time, of course, uh, we will have uh, Lonnie and Ralph, they will be covering CPAC. So this is coming right off of Trailblazers Weekend. We're getting ready to go into CPAC, and there are a few other events that we will be covering and be a part of. Because, uh, quite frankly, I, I really believe that this network is about to boom like never before. The music is distorted. Hopefully, well, the music has gone now. And uh, hopefully, uh, everyone can clearly hear uh, me. Thank you, Mary. Mary's my executive producer on air, you know what I'm saying? So when, when Mary's not pleased, nobody's happy. Can, can we just put it that way? It, it's... And uh, oh, uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, especially since uh, Melanie's not in the chat room, um, and Deborah's not in the chat room, and all the other ladies aren't in the chat room just yet. Let, let me go ahead and make this uh, announcement because they think I'm a crude Philistine when it comes to romantically uh, engaging my wife. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Today I made certain that my wife had 18 long stem red roses uh, to remember 18 years of great love, great promise, and great joy. Not from me, but from her. Uh, and I thank God for us celebrating, actually this would be about our 20th uh, Valentine celebration together. Two years before we got married, we greeted and loved each other. Uh, and made a commitment to marry each other, and so we did. And so, uh, to my lovely wife, I wish you the most sincere and ever loving Valentine's. Also, Mary Brockman, I wish you the happiest Valentine's Day. Love you dearly. Um, and so, just that being said, uh, I want to take this particular moment uh, as well uh, to. Prepare for the Pledge of Allegiance. You know how we do this, ladies and gentlemen. On For those who are listening to us on Ustream, forgive me, um, those who are listening to us on SHR Media Live, uh, as well as on HP Talk Radio or HighPlainsPunditMedia.com, um, and as well for the 2 a.m. audience on the Liberty Channel, right over there. Uh, there's a flag behind us, and all around us found a flag um, to pledge allegiance to. Everyone else's live stream audience, there's a big old flag right over here. For the Ustream audience, the little flags behind me uh, that you'll see. 
put your right hand over your heart and let's pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and let our children lead us in doing so. Take it away, kids. Okay. Bit of a technical issue. Okay. All right, let's begin. Ready? Begin. That's what I'm talking about. That that is so inspiring to me, having the kids uh, do that every night. That is really, really inspiring, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there is a gentleman who is about to come on our program today who has served in some of the greatest capacities of diplomacy in college, uh, as well as uh, for the State Department. Okay, this. Here we go. All right. Okay, we gotta stop that right there. Okay, let's try that one more time. Here we go. Joe Rice Johnson the third. Wow, that's pretty loud. I <laughs> see. Executive coach has joined the executive coach group at the University of Tampa in Tampa, Florida. He's a member of the International Speakers Bureau for the U.S. Department of State. Uh, he just finished a speaking engagement via the embassy in Kazakhstan, uh, and he serves uh, as a chairman of the Republican Overseas Group uh, in Russia, uh, as well as in the Republic of Georgia. A, a brilliant man, a good friend, uh, Joe Rice Johnson. It's a pleasure and honor to have you on the air with us tonight, sir. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Now, Mr. Rice, I, I, first and foremost, I, 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 what is all this great concern regarding the relationship of the U.S. with Russia? What, uh, when did Russia become such a prominent figure that uh, working with them in any capacity is detrimental to our society? Well, that's a I guess that's a sixty-four thousand dollar question right now. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't take that long, but I think frankly that um, that were uh, the new countries were uh, uh, strong, strong allies in World War Two, and um, set about the defeat of uh, of. Um, the Nazis, um, and uh, so there is a there there is a uh, of uh, assistance between the two countries. It goes back a long, long, long time, and so the World War Two thing is just one. Uh, that's just one hundred uh, of how the two countries have worked together. What we find ourselves in right now um, is somewhat of a conundrum in that. Um, there is what we reason all uh, to solve uh, opportunity to beat a terrorist scourge that could be uh, uh, that could cause damage not only uh, to major populations and there's Russia, but of course major populations. Exactly. There's room for us to cooperate and work together. The United States. Yeah, there's room for us to cooperate and expunge the threat of jihadism, uh, not only in the Middle East, but here and, and elsewhere in Russia. Um, and I thought at one time the Democrats were close friends with Russia. I, I mean, Bernie Sanders got married there. Uh, Joe Ken John Kennedy, I, I mean, uh, uh, Ed Kennedy. 
uh, basically did everything he could to mess up uh, Ronald Reagan's attempt uh, to defuse tensions between Russia and the U.S. I, I, I thought I thought the the Democrats were okay with Russia. What, what happened? Well, as I say, you know, there, there are competing interests across the globe right now, and sure as the world, if someone can find a, um, a situation that you can uh, drive a wedge uh, into uh, to um, make your opponent uh, like you, uh, um, uh, kind of paint them with a, something that's messy, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we, we've seen this before in American politics. Um, uh, I agree with, with uh, uh, every time with Russia, but I think if you go back there again and you take a look uh, during the McCarthy area and the red baiting and everything else, I'm not sure that that's not where, again, but what I'm here to me is to say this is kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, um, you know, there are power centers at play here um, that don't want to give up. Um, and quite frankly, it appears to me that Michael Flynn uh, and he, uh, you know, a target of uh, struggles for power. Exactly. Uh, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn uh, has been the toast of MSNBC and CNN all day long. Um, apparently, uh, he lied. Uh, to Vice President Mike Pence about the content of his phone calls with a Russian ambassador. Uh, and apparently, because he was not fully faithful in terms of explaining uh, those particular phone calls to Mike Pence, uh, he was released from his post uh, last night. Um, I... Now, apparently, they're going with the fact that the Trump administration knew 15 days ago about the content of the phone conversation with Russia, and uh, they are as uh, complicit in this uh, as Mike Flynn is guilty. Uh, but I, I want to know, when did making a phone call to an ambassador uh, so detrimental that it requires people to ask for the impeachment of Donald Trump just in three weeks of his uh, presidency. Well, there again, and you bring up a very good point, I think there are struggles for power, uh, you know, here uh, in our country. And this, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's, this whole industry so no good purpose. Um, is, um, our allies right now um, around the world are scratching their heads saying, what in the world is going on in your country? <laughs> those people, those people who, who, you know, can we trust you? Uh, are you going to come to our defense? What's really going on here? Then there's another group of people and uh, that are uh, looking at this and they're saying, well, is it an opportunity or what? It's a divided nation. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a step back. It's not a divided nation. It's a divided power center in Washington. Mm -hmm. This is what you've got that's going on. And people, whenever there's a, a division of power like that, and there's this, this perceived, then what is going to happen is, is that your enemies are going to take of you every, every place that they can. So a couple of days ago, we have, um, we have uh, this um, uh, very strange uh in North Korea, who's now has launched another uh, another missile. Uh, I'm not really sure if anybody really truly knows what capacity that they've been. I don't know it. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe uh, our intelligence service knows it. it I'm just not worried about it because they really can't do anything. But you know, you, know, you don't have to launch a missile a nuclear war with a nuclear warhead on it and cause problems. You really don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you know, you can put together the size of a Coca-Cola can, mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, mm -hmm. um, and you can do, and you can, you, know, you can end, uh, begin to end um, uh, parts of the civilization as we know it. This is what is really, really dangerous. Is, is 
And it was, you know, if I if I could just make a this is a personal comment, but I think I think, it, I think it's also quite frankly this is something that everyone needs to be thinking about. Number one, Mike Fred is gone. Yeah, that was our national security chief. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, we don't have anyone in place right now. We don't know who that's going to be. We don't know if it's the, uh, the former commander at CENTCOM, uh, Ed McGill, mm -hmm. uh, based in Florida, who served under Mattis. We don't know who this is right now. Mm -hmm. What we do know is, is that <clears throat> um, now is not the time, in my opinion, now is not the time to be calling for more investments because the not is done. Why kick up uh, I don't really, uh, I don't get, I don't see the purpose in that. Um, mm -hmm. We need as a nation, in my opinion, uh, this is a time, this is a time for Republicans and Democrats and independents to be squabbling at each other. Exactly. This is time to kind of rally around the flag, in my opinion, and say, look, let's take a look at what the other thing in the office. Everybody knows the problem they had when they came into office. Mm -hmm. um, there were problems when Barack Obama came into office. We're not talking about major problems here. Of course, there was no one who was fired immediately or like this, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. However, you know, give the president, give our president time to you know, get his lips. I mean, it's a bump the road. Uh, give him time to figure this out. These are, the people there are not you know, they're not incompetent. There are power struggles that are going on. Mm -hmm. So let's, you know, give it time to figure this out. And let's just hope that tomorrow morning, uh, and he doesn't wake up to, uh, our nation doesn't wake up to something that's much more serious than a national security advisor getting fired because he admitted that he did not, he wasn't uh, as truthful as he could have been to the vice president. Yeah. In 30 days, mm -hmm. if this just, in 30 days or less, quite frankly, if this just is laid to rest, that will be forgotten. Yes! It will be forgotten. <laughs> and if you, but if you keep, if you continue to dig at this and nick to it, nick to it, it won't be forgotten. And so, there again, all of the struggle is a power struggle, is what it is. I have, uh, uh, maybe, maybe what it is is a coup. Yes. yes. That's what it is. Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is as, a, as a nation, it would seem to me that what we need to be doing here is to say, look, you know, this is the president of the United States. Like him or not like him, he is the president of the United States. There are threats right and left in the United States, uh, internally and externally. We need to kind of, in my opinion, we need to, kind of, we need to rally around the flag and say, Fine, let's fix it, let's move forward. Somebody made a mistake, that, that person is gone. Let's just hope that there's nothing else that's standing out there. Let's move forward and let's fix the situations that need to be fixed. Exactly. That's what I that's what I hope we see. I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're talking with Joe Rice Johnson the third, he's chairman of the Republicans overseas in Russia and the Republic of Georgia. He's also uh, an executive coach at the University of Tampa, a, a brilliant speaker, a man who understands foreign policy, and that's why we wanted him here tonight to talk with us uh, regarding not only the Flynn matter, because to, in all earnestness, Flynn will be forgotten in about two weeks. Uh, let's just be honest. That's just the way it's going to be. Uh, he didn't do anything that was illegal. He did something that was not procedural. And as a result of his unfaithfulness in terms of procedure, uh, he was released uh, last night from his position. Uh, there are a number of individuals who are being considered for National Security Advisor, but again, uh, like Mr. Johnson says, we are now at a weak point. Um, not that we don't have the nuclear armaments, not that we don't have the best Army, Navy, and all that other stuff in the world, but literally leadership uh, has to be reestablished. Uh, relationships between the President uh, and the new leader has to be established in terms of foreign policy with the National Security Advisor. Uh, that's the person who tells him every single morning what's happening around the world. Uh, and that's not something that should just, it doesn't just happen overnight with anybody. You have to be someone special and someone trusted to do that particular position. 
but the uh, Mr. Johnson, the 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 arsenic term used around the world apparently is the term President Donald Trump, uh, and those on the left here are doing everything they can do in the waning days of them being left in the bureaucracy uh, to destroy his presidency. Uh, and as well, overseas, there are individuals who are concerned that maybe this president isn't the right person for the role. I wanted to get your insights. What is, what are you, as chairman of the Republicans overseas in Russia, uh, is Vladimir Putin, uh, President Vladimir Putin, uh, fearful of Donald Trump? Is he uh, concerned at all, or is he seeing him as a right fit for the position for this time period? That is a very good. Yeah, that is a, an excellent question. I, you know, and I, I don't, for one second, um, have insight into better Putin's mind. Yes. That said, that said, look, been working in, in in Moscow for as long as I have, and also in Ukraine and also in the Republic of Georgia. I understand the mindset of what is going on there. I'm not saying that uh, that I understand it better than anybody else, but I understand it. Uh, perhaps yeah. uh, more than uh, a lot of people um, because I lived and worked there for a long time. Yeah, well, let, um, me, let me just say this here. You understand it better than those individuals who are MSNBC and CNN tonight uh, trying to give commentary on the Flynn matter. A am I right about that one? Yeah, you know, they, they don't call me for interviews. I'm not in that circle, but I, you know, I'm confident I can hold my own with anyone exactly. that I would be up against. <laughs> but here's, here's what I do believe. Um, you know, if you take a history, if you, if you do a little bit of historical research about Russia, and you understand where they came from, and you understand that, I think it was last year, that Moscow had its 878th or 888th, whatever it is, birthday? Mm -hmm. Moscow. Yeah. And how old are we? 280 or something like that? Exactly. So you have, you, have, you have cities over there that have been around for a long, long, long time. You have a country that has been invaded and invaded and invaded. And the United States has not had to deal with that. So there is a mindset. Uh, that the Russian populace has, mm -hmm. uh, and rightfully so. And I think if you grew up in that environment, you would have a different mindset than, for example, Kenneth, than you and I had growing up in the United States. Exactly. I, I'm not saying one is superior than the, than the other. I'm not going to get into that. I'm saying it's different. They are very, very, very patriotic. They are just as we are incredibly patriotic here. They love their country just like we love our country. What Vladimir Putin has done is, is that he has taken over, uh, I think it was in 2000, when he was tapped to be president by Boris Yeltsin. I mean, he took over a country that was basically really struggling, and it, it came back. Yeah. Uh, and it brought it back. Um, uh, and uh, now uh, the way that they do things there are different than the way that we do things here. And I've done, you know, one of the things that I did in, in, in Russia uh, was a lot of polling, survey research, and by trusted people who, who, who do survey research in that country and in the surrounding countries. Maybe that's Gallup, maybe it's GFK, mm -hmm. maybe and there's two or three other folks that do a lot of work in that country. And consistently they come back with veteran ratings around 85, depending think, between 85 and 87 percent. Well, you know, that ought to tell us something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ought to tell us something. They love the leader. Yes. They love the leader. They respect their leader. But then this goes all the way back when you start doing some historical research about Russia. The Tsar, in those days, the Tsar can do no wrong. Yeah. The people who are doing the wrong are the people around the Tsar. So let's get rid of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are looking at. To answer your question, I'm not sure that Vladimir Putin uh, fears uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, I don't think that he's got any reason to fear Donald Trump. I think he respects Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. He respects. I think he, he respects the United States. The only thing that that he, that he wants, quite frankly, is is that 
It's a sticking point to him that the breakup of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical disaster probably in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. I can understand why he can be why, why he feels that way. Mm -hmm. But I don't see, quite frankly, I don't see him uh, uh, doing what he could totally do if he wanted to uh, by going in and taking over some of these countries that became uh, uh, new countries after the breakup of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the Soviet Union. Exactly. The, 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 the mess that is in the eastern part of Ukraine right now, mm -hmm. and the uh, the occupation of Crimea is an issue. There's no two ways about that. That's an issue. But if one goes to the Crimea, what you will find is there's nobody speaking Ukrainian in the Crimea. <laughs> they, all speak, they all speak Russian. And then you do a little bit more research and you find out that, for goodness sakes, Nikita Khrushchev gave away Crimea. He gave it to, to Ukraine back in the 50s. And you can have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have it. Um, so, uh, in my opinion, and I've spent a lot of time in Ukraine, and spent a lot of time specifically in Crimea, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't really get the sense that the people in Crimea, quite frankly, I don't really get the sense that they're upset. Yeah. How this took place, I will agree that how it took place was not good. Mm -hmm. Not good at all. But I don't see, you know, I don't see... Uh, I don't see Crimeans totally upset about this. I see other people who are upset about it, but I don't see Crimeans who are upset about it. And I think that if I, I think that if, if Vladimir Putin really could, really would, I think that what would be what he would really like to have is some people say, well, you can call it another Yalta, but it can't be another Yalta. You can't divide up the world like no. like it was divided up in World War Two at Yalta because China wasn't a part of Yalta. Exactly. But China is a part of the world now. Mm -hmm. So you can't, maybe you don't have another Yalta. Maybe, you, maybe, it's, maybe it is another Yalta, but maybe it's not in Yalta. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to be able to, and, and Vladimir Putin knows this, global problems are not going to be able to be solved, quite frankly, without the cooperation of the Russians. They are not. Uh, well, well, I guess you can. You can you know, kick everybody over and run roughshod over everyone and solve all the problems. Boy, that's really got us a lot of good things. <laughs> I recommend it highly. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, I'm a patriot and I left my country, but for good, you know, yeah. yeah, I'm not the only American walking around, quite frankly, that has basically said, I, do we really need to be doing this? Yeah. I mean, what do we gain out of it? Exactly. Uh, seems to me we should be fixing things here. Mm -hmm. um, instead of spending money there, but I, you know, I, I do believe that what we need to do as a nation. Uh, let me go back. Let me finish asking your question. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't believe that he uh, fears uh, Donald Trump. Uh, I don't think that he really, at the end of the day, thinks, "Oh, this is really, really great. Things are going to be great again." That's not what Russia wants. Mm -hmm. It is not what they want to be. Is they want to be thought of as a respected player at the global affairs table. Mm -hmm. End of story. That yeah. is what they want. And, and, so, and there, there are people there, there are people here at home uh, who, well, there are those who think of Russia as it was as a nuclear power uh, during the 70s uh, and going into the Reagan period. A lot of people have their mindset there that that's still the Russia uh, of this day, and really Russia's economy uh, is slightly fractured. <laughs> and I, I do mean that in, in jest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's tongue in cheek. Exactly. It's it's never been as strong as people have purported to be, and it certainly isn't as strong when you look at it on paper. Uh, so they have their own issues. But the great thing about Vladimir Putin is he has absolute uh, adoration from the people. So the economy doesn't affect him in the same manner as it would affect a U.S. president here, which, you know, if you have a GDP that falls below 3%, you can forget it. You shouldn't be reelected. Um, and so I, I set all that up to, to answer this particular question. Um, where should Americans look at 
uh, Vladimir Putin in a sense of uh, what he ha he can offer us, uh, and which should be the limitations put upon Donald Trump uh, in terms of expecting something from Vladimir Putin. I think that if you can draw out a plan where the two countries can find areas of uh, common interest, mm -hmm. and that and at the top of that right now, uh, in my opinion, has to be uh, the uh, uh, cessation of nuclear prol proliferation. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing has to be, in my opinion, look, you got so you got a rogue element running around out there uh, that's causing damage right and left. Um, so let's figure out a way to fix this, and if we can fix it together, let's do it. Now, uh, you make another move like you did in Crimea, uh, we're just not going to stand for that. Yeah. For example, you move, you, you move on the Baltics, game over. Yes. You're not going to stand for that. Mm -hmm. You do something else that's, you know, um, uh, uh, uncalled for, mm -hmm. we're just not going to stand for it. This time, there will be a red line, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't cross it. Let's figure out ways to work together to make sure that we don't destroy civilization as we know it right now. Because, Kenneth, mm -hmm. you and I know, and your listeners know, that nobody wins a nuclear war. <laughs> Therefore, it should never be fought. Exactly. The only people safe, the only people safe from this, mm -hmm. quite frankly, if you look at the prevalent thing wins, if total all hell breaks loose, and you look at the prevailing winds of carrying this stuff around the globe, the only place it's safe, I think, is New Zealand. Exactly. <laughs> You're exactly right. Listen, so, so, so I mean, you know, um, and, and I mean, this, this stuff, I mean, a lot of people don't realize the, how serious this can actually be, you know, and so, you know, um, you know so, so if something did happen, to think for one second, for one second, that the Russians would not retaliate, is to be incredibly naive. Very naive. Very naive. <laughs> because they've got the capability to do it. Two, these two countries have got the capability, quite frankly, to, I mean, to end civilization as we know it. Exactly. I mean, imagine waking up. Let's just say that they do something small. Mm -hmm. Imagine waking up and all the major cities in, uh, in the United States and Russia uh, are not completely gone. But let's just say something small, like maybe a quarter gone, mm -hmm. uh, or quite frankly, um, there's a plan that destroys all of the electro grids um, in the major population centers um, in different parts of the United States. Can you imagine waking up to that? Wow. You can't go well, to the mm -hmm. bank mm -hmm. because the electricity's out. Mm -hmm. You have no refrigeration. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about... <laughs> We're talking about fooling around the Stone Age, quite frankly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so everything, you know, you won't even have your radio show anymore, Ken, because you won't even listen to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, we will actually have Afghanistan all over the world. So <laughs> well, exactly, yeah. so why don't we find those people who are trying to do that to us right now, mm -hmm. if there is a way that the two countries can work together, and quite frankly, it doesn't just have to be those two countries. You can bring in other countries into this process. I mean, we've done this before. Yeah. And, okay, fine, we're going to go in and we're going to take out that and we're going to do it. You know, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. And some people will say it won't work. Well, looks to me like the Russians did exactly what they said they were going to do in Syria. Yeah, they did. You know? They I mean, did. They, they've done exactly, we're going to do this and, you know, I hate it that some, you know, innocents are going to die, but we're, and we're more innocents die all the time. So they've done exactly what they said they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And that upsets a lot of people who are saying, oh, we, we can't get along anybody with that. Listen, we're going to take, so. we got to take a hard break uh, coming up in just a few minutes, just two minutes, in fact. Um, but I, I want you to let everyone know uh, how they can get in contact with you because I'm a big fan of the Republican overseas and Republicans abroad because I think you all do a wonderful job keeping Americans. Uh, in the know, uh, both there and here at home, and we want you to come back on the program, because I want to talk with you uh, at the beginning of next month about Z Xi Jinping uh, and yeah. about the uh, the South China Sea, uh, which, mm -hmm. which might become a new Yalta. <laughs> Good well. Good well. Uh, but tell everyone, how, how can they get in contact with you, sir? 
Well, Ken, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lay you off as my agent or anything. <laughs> I don't want my email. I don't want my email box filled up to where I can't control it. It's busy as it is. Exactly. I think the thing to do is is that um, maybe well, I don't know how to answer that question. Um, I mean, I'm not adverse to having conversations with people, but I don't want to. No, no, no. Um, Regarding Republicans overseas. Republicans overseas. Oh, yeah, fine. You can just yeah. send that to my email address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and you've got that. You've got that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll do it. If people, if people want to call your show and say, finally, we'd like to talk about Republicans overseas, then what I, I would do is, okay, depending on that country, Mm -hmm. Then I would refer them to the particular person in that country who's the chapter president of that country. Bingo. That's what I would. That's what I would do. If they wanted to talk about over Republicans overseas in Russia, or Republicans overseas in Georgia, I can do that all day long. Mm -hmm. But if they want to talk about other uh, uh, countries, if they live in another country, they want to get involved. I can. They can send me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe they could contact you, Kate. Yeah. yeah. Because since you like it so much, you could be a process in this. Uh, uh, you could be part of this entire process, which I think would be good. I am, um, I am open, very open to that. And if you want me to get in contact, if you are living in Ethiopia, if you're living in Kenya, if you're living in Russia, China, and you're an American and you want to be involved in the politics of America still, uh, definitely get in contact with me. I will refer you to uh, whichever Republicans overseas or abroad that you are should be a part of. Thank you so much. That would be great. Joe, I, you, you are awesome. I love you. having you I on. Enjoy it, Ken. All right. We'll have you on next month. You, you're doing a good service. You're a patriot. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, mm -hmm. fellow patriot. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Bye. Take care. Uh, Joe Rice Johnson. See, I don't do what those guys on CNBC and all the others do. I, I'm not going to get some Joe Blow who writes for the New York Times to tell me what's happening in Russia. I go to Russia. And I get the uh, information. Uh, that's just the way I am. I I don't like to go through uh, you know, wannabes. I, I, I want to go directly to the source. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you all right now, uh, if you're a part of Republican, if you are a conservative and, and overseas, uh, quite frankly, you need to be a part of Republicans abroad or Republicans overseas. You need to be a part of it because we need your votes here at home. We really do. 2018 is coming up, and we might have to make some changes even within our own party. We'll talk about that in coming weeks. But, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back right after these messages with more of the best in Urban Conservative Talk. Yes, you're listening to TECN. Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Good night, boys, for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk Bobcat Saloon, coming soon to Ossicles near you, Excelsior. Hi, my name is Billy Lawson of the Billy Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. They told me that I needed to be humble, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I decided to be awesome instead. That's the Billy Lawson Show, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. here on the Exceptional Conservative Network.
Tell us how unpleasant wine guy, Valentine's Bite. Depending on when you're hearing this, Valentine's Day is still going on, or it's all over and you've survived it. Thinking about this pseudo-holiday, I decided to give listeners a few tips on surviving the next one. If you're not in a relationship, don't let every media outlet convince you you're a loser. Enjoy the extra cash. If you're in a relationship, then I have something for everyone. Now, ladies, I love you. As often as possible. <laughs> if you get you a nice Valentine's present, reciprocate. For instance, if you're lucky enough for him to have gotten you some kind of a diamond bracelet or ring or something, get him a nice big screen TV. Or at the very least, a grill. And I don't mean a cheap little Weber thing from Walmart. I mean a nice one. Remember, in the Obama economy, he had to work hard to get you that diamond. And if he didn't have a job like a lot of people, he had to sell a lot of weed, and let's face it, dodging the cops ain't easy. <laughs> if you're a man, Valentine's Day is a racket. You know it, I know it. Thing is, though, you gotta play the game if you're in a relationship. You can be blessed with the most practical, level-headed woman that God can have given you. And while she may not care that much about Valentine's Day, she does have friends and co-workers who will be comparing what they got. So do what you can reasonably afford to do. Remember you're lucky to have that lady in your life and treat her well on Valentine's Day. Or if you want to be a rebel, I'll tell you something to do that the ladies love. Pick a day and get her something nice. Or do something nice for her. Not her birthday, not an anniversary, not a day close after you've done something to make her angry at you. Just a random day with absolutely no significance. You get her a nice present or do something nice for her on that day. She'll love it, and along with everything else she gives you, she'll give you the one thing that all men want. Power tools. Yeah! <laughs> This has been an unpleasant blind guy, Valentine's Bite. Now, for our nails, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Have you heard the news? There's more to Prime than free two-day shipping on shoes. There are tons of movies ready to stream. It's like living in a film lover's dream. More to Prime. More to Prime. I want to join. How much should I pay? You can sign up for a free trial today. So let's sing it one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that there are listeners all around the world, uh, whether you're in Russia or China uh, or here at home, that listen to the Exceptional Conservative Network. Uh, I just want to warn you, if you happen to be on your date tonight with your Valentine date, I'm about to play that uh, commercial. All right? So get your cigarettes together. Uh, step outside. Uh, so that your date doesn't see this, okay, and as you listen to the uh, commercial, uh, light up. There you go. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money, on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. Hey, it's Jersey Joe. Total Reaver, Common Sense. 
Hopefully you can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you back to the Exceptional Conservative Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, live from Washington, D.C. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want you all to know, because uh, I can tell you all, because not a lot of people listen to our program. <laughs> uh, but this happens to be Valentine's Day, and I am not going to talk about politics in the last portion of this hour. Uh, it, it behooves us. Uh, to be a bit more mm, uh, classical in our approach on this particular day. Uh, this is a moment of sweet and tender consideration as it is Valentine's Day. I know some of you all are fighting it very hard. I myself have been accused of being a Philistine uh, and very pragmatic pragmatic, forgive me, regarding this particular day. I don't believe that you should listen to Hallmark and the Hallmark Channel tell you when you should love up on somebody or, or what love is or, uh, or, or how you should express your Valentine, ex you know, love for one. Ah! I, it, 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 listen, listen. I want you all to understand something. Love is a very special thing and it should not just merely be flaunted about uh, on a singular day I do not believe with any of my total belief uh, that uh, we should even consider one day to be satisfactory in loving a woman I can't dare <laughs> and notice I'm speaking and my wife has gone to sleep on Valentine's night. Oh, great joy, great joy. <laughs> I personally do not believe that any woman should be graded or jilted by one particular day out of the year to determine whether she is loved or not. And in fact, I encourage men to practice Valentine's Day 364 days out of the year. I, I really do. Treat her like a lady 364 days out of the year. Now, that might be a little expensive, um, but this is what I did um, for my wife for Valentine's Day. You see, my wife called on her way home after a long day at work and asked me to run her some hot water and not to forget the bubbles. So I did. I went downstairs to the kitchen. I turned the hot water on in the sink and added the uh, dishwashing liquid uh, so that when she arrived home, the sink was prepared for her work. I, I, I hope she'll be happy. She's so sweet. And I love it a bit. You see, that's the kind of love that we need to have on 364. See, that's real love, people. That's what I'm talking about. That's a man who goes out of his way. <laughs> yeah, yes, you can tag me. I, that's what I'm going to tweet that out. I am the king of romance. Every man should be listening to this particular show tonight. For the king of romance, I am going to give you, uh, <laughs> give your wife what she needs. Now, listen, you all don't have the professor, Dr. Michael Jones, here to obfuscate uh, my. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Mary says I'm all heart. I don't, I really don't believe. Unique is a man that all guys should look up to. Thank you, Brandy. <laughs> I think you should give a woman what she needs. If she's barefoot, make her... No, I can't say that. Because then I would get in trouble with all of the women who are listening throughout this particular network. But I'm just saying that true love on this particular night should not be 
measured by the number of roses that you give a woman. I mean, why just roses? Why can't when you're going past the cemetery, pick something up for her and show them to her? That, did it not take you the same amount of time and effort as going to the store, waiting in line to buy roses that were shipped in and then frozen? What? These are living flowers, okay, right out of the cemetery. <laughs> They've already been shown love. I mean, I, and, and who's going to use them at the cemetery? Here's another tip for you, gentlemen. I know, because some of you all on the on the left coast uh, haven't, you know, it, it's it's still rather early. It's like uh, uh, seven in the evening. You're on your way. Uh, <laughs> yes, I said the cemetery. Now, now, mind you, why is it, uh, and, and this goes for the guys who are dating someone who's a leftist, why is it that they can tell you, in the sense of observing climate change, to take public transportation 364 days out of the year, and on the one day that you are required to take her out on the date, uh, you have to Uber it. Or you have to drive your car, or you have to have a limousine ride. Uh, I say, make certain that you do not forsake her commitment to climate change uh, and and to uh, phony science. Make certain that you take her on public transportation like you would on any other day, because you're showing her love. Love says that I will not take you from the joys of your philosophies. I will not obstruct you with my temptations uh, of tearing up ro I'm tearing down roses uh, which convert CO2 uh, to oxygen. What kind of man does that kind of thing? What kind of man kills roses? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, I don't want to be a murderer. I, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, uh, especially for those who are on the West Coast before we go to the next hour of our program. And I speak with Janet Hall, the J. Hall World Report. Do not use poems that begin, roses are red, violets are blue. Now, some of you all might be thinking, well, Ken, the construct is a literary form that has been used since about the 17th century uh, and is exclusively limited to such romantic uh, expressions uh, as uh, dramatic prose. Yeah, and, and, and some verse. I understand that. And, and I appreciate your kinder from your English Literature 201 class. Uh, but here goes. Violets, red, roses are red, violets are blue. If you get me risky, I will make love to you. You understand the pressure of trying to come up with one of those red Okay, all right. So please, if you're going to go to the store, don't get the roses are red, violets are blue cards. Don't get those. And remember, if God didn't want you to copy another man's poem from the Hallmark card, then why did He give you a cell phone with a picture phone on it? Huh? Huh? Just click it. Uh, put that card right in front of it, click it, uh, and send it to her. Those are expressions from you. Save yourself a good five dollars, too. I I'm here for you all night long. <laughs> I am here for you all night long. Take them pictures of the Hallmark cards and send them accordingly. We'll be right back with more of the best in Urban Conservative Talk, the Exception Conservative Show, live for the nation's capital. And here's one more tip. This is, again, my very good friend, Dave Milner, the unpleasant blind guy. Take it away, Dave. Time for an unpleasant blind guy. Valentine's Night. Depending on when you're hearing this, Valentine's Day is still going on, or it's all over and you've survived it. Thinking about this pseudo holiday, I decided to give listeners a few tips on surviving the next one. If you're not in a relationship, don't let every media outlet convince you you're a loser. Enjoy the extra cash. If you're in a relationship, 
then I have something for everyone. And ladies, I love you as often as possible. But your man works hard. If he gets you a nice Valentine's present, reciprocate. For instance, if you're lucky enough for him to have gotten you some kind of a diamond bracelet or ring or something, get him a nice big screen TV. Or at the very least a grill. Yeah. I don't mean a cheap little weather thing from Walmart. Thank you. I mean a nice one. Mm -hmm. Remember, in the Obama economy, he had to work hard to get you that diamond. And if he didn't have a job like a lot of people, he had to sell a lot of weed and let's face it, dodging the cops ain't easy. <laughs> and if you're a man, Valentine's Day is a racket. You know it, I know it. Thing is though, you gotta play the game if you're in a relationship. You can be blessed with the most practical, level-headed woman that God can have given you. And while she may not care that much about Valentine's Day, she does have friends and co-workers who will be comparing what they got. So do what you can reasonably afford to do. Remember you're lucky to have that lady in your life and treat her well on Valentine's Day. Or if you want to be a rebel, I'll tell you something to do that the ladies love. Pick a day and get her something nice, or do something nice for her. Not her birthday, not an anniversary, not a day close after you've done something to make her angry at you. Just a random day with absolutely no significance. You give her a nice present, or do something nice for her on that day. She'll love it, and along with everything else she gives you, she'll give you the one thing that all men want. Power tools. <laughs> This has been an unpleasant blind guy, Valentine's Bite. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Thank you for the turkey, McCall. And I really enjoy ICRN, your station, the station I listen to all day. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dominique. For that. Uh, just, I don't. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. The best late night conservative talk show in America, Backhead Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clint. Uh, and uh, we're working on immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here too. But <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best in late night conservative talk, the best late night conservative talk show in America. In America. In America. In America. In America. And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to the Exceptional Conservative Show live on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialists. So glad. Oh, look at all these beautiful women in the chat room. Uh, it's a lot of single men sitting at the bar tonight. Because <laughs> all the beautiful women are in this chat room. Oh, my goodness. Mary Brockman is my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me. You will be dismissed. Uh, of course, uh, Celeste is in here. Oh, smooches, Celeste. Creole, white girl is in here. Claudia Cheek, 
Claudia is a beautiful woman. I'm telling that's a very beautiful we saw her at Trailblazers. Oh man. Uh Brandy Bohannon. Beautiful. That's my daughter. Beautiful. Well, not really genetically, but she might as well be. That's my conservative daughter. So all hands off. Uh, and of course, Melanie uh, Collette, uh, who Money Talk with Melanie, uh, goes without saying uh, how great a person she is. All right, so tomorrow night, as I get, uh, thank you. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't play that because you know I like that music. <laughs> I am not going to lie to you. I love that groove. I love the grooves that are being played now uh, on my network. But um, I, I want you all to know that there is a big announcement that's going to be made tomorrow night about TECN, and it will be made on shrmedia.com on Sackheads Radio tomorrow night between 11.05 and 11.10. Good evening, Miss Hall. Ms. Ch okay, we are having a technical problem there. Let's try that one more time. Um, we'll try this one. All right. Love <clears throat> uh, That's not the one. Okay, <laughs> give us a moment on that one. But I will. I want to make this. Um, for those who are watching us via live stream and you stream, thank you so much. And for SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Media who are listening to us live, thank you all so much because I want to make this announcement. Uh, normally on my show, I announce new people who are coming on the network. But our network is growing so fast. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you, Barry. Uh, our network is growing so fast with some of the best conservatives. And, and a lot of people walk up to you and say, I want to be on your network. Uh, and that's great. I, I, you know, but my, my network has certain criteria, certain standards. Um, you have to get the best of the brightest. So tomorrow night, not on my show, but actually on Sackheads Radio uh, at 11.05, p.m. Eastern Time, um, they will be interviewing the newest host on TECN. That's right. I will not give that person's name away, um, but I'm going to tell you all, you all want to be here tomorrow night to listen. This is a big one. Okay, if... Uh, Melanie, will you tell them that, that, that we're growing? Wait, 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 you, Mary will tell you that we're really growing. Uh, but uh, TECN ain't looking back. We are becoming a very powerful network, uh, especially here in Washington, D.C. And, in fact, uh, we will be covering CPAC 2017 this year. Uh, and I, I want to make the announcement and send glad tidings to CPAC. Uh, they approved. Uh, of course, they approved uh, Ralph J. Chittam Sr., and they approved... For real, for real. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Melody. Uh, they approved Lonnie Poindexter. They approved uh, um, Shannon and Mike uh, for the right way in the morning drive time. They approved Melanie. She will be there. But they also approved me attending. So I will have to attend uh, as well. Um, and I, 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 I hope that our booth and let me just, can I be bold, can I be bodacious enough to say this? I hope our booth is right next to WMAL 6.30 a.m. in Washington, D.C. I know, I know what you're saying, I know what you're thinking, Ken, Ken, wait a minute, we ain't nowhere near that. You got hopes that don't even want to go to CPAC. You got hopes that don't even want to do nothing with it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know what you're saying. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, TECN is going to upset the balance of conservative media in the world. It really is. And I am just gracious uh, to work with these wonderful people. Um, I'm expecting us to be able to do our drive time um, show. Brandy said I was going to skip CPAC, but with Ken there is definitely worth going. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Brandy. Um, and I'll have to talk with SHR in terms of how we handle coverage on the SHR media during the day, uh, daytime coverage, because uh, we great we got great shows during the course of the day. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, Shannon will. I, I'm hoping that Shannon and Mike will be broadcasting at 7 a.m. from there. Because uh, I know MAL is broadcasting from 6 a.m. Uh, at CPAC. And my hope, the hope and, and in fact, I, I just might do this. Uh, if uh, We'll work it out. But I'm expecting Shannon and Mike to broadcast live from CPAC. Uh, and, and I'm expecting uh, Ralph and Lonnie to broadcast live from CPAC. Uh, it, it, I don't know, and I, I, if, if anybody's ever gone there, I don't know of too many people uh, who have visited uh, CPAC and seen a network like TECN there. I have, I don't know, maybe someone can tell me that they have, but I, I don't remember a network like TECN there. Uh, I've seen other networks, and I've seen individual shows and, and the Blaze and all that kind of stuff, but I have never seen a network. A dominant network, and so I'm so I'm so excited. I am so pumped up, and I'm pumped up because we're moving towards Freedom Fest too. And I'm trying to convince one of my daughters, Janice Hall, um, to do Freedom Fest. I really am. Uh, I Brandy might be doing Freedom Fest. Uh, so, good evening, Miss Hall. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? Just fine. Look, look, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you want to see a beautiful woman? Janice Hall is a beautiful young lady. I'm telling you. Uh, love her dresses. Okay? Uh, <laughs> she's a beautiful young woman. Brilliant young woman. Uh, and, and that's just not a father figure saying that. But, uh, did you enjoy your time period at Trailblazers? I did. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and hang out with me was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't have to pay you to say that. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but what made me have such great joy, the words that came to your mouth, what were the word that one word that came to your mouth that gave me such great joy? Uh... There you go! Oh my goodness! Oh yes! <laughs> oh, I am trying to convince my daughter here, Janice Hall, who you hear every Tuesday night uh, at ten oh five on the Exceptional Conservative Show for the Janice the J Hall World Report. I am trying to convince Janice to come to Vegas with us for Freedom Fest. Um, and it, yeah, you, you you know uh. That's a lot of old people there playing the slot machines, but there's other stuff there too. <laughs> like hot weather. Like hot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and, and less late than it was the year before. Yeah. Uh, but you're thinking about it, right? I, I am thinking about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That that's good. That's good. See, as a father, I have learned when a child tells you that they're thinking about it, don't press them. Don't push them, because they true. they might go the other way. Just kind of mold. No, no, don't, don't leave it alone. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want you to know that um, Mrs. Biggs told me to stop pressing you. So I will stop pressing you. You know how difficult right. that is for me, right? <laughs> I, I, I do know. Yeah. <laughs> Janice Hall, J. Hall World Report. Forgive me uh, uh, for that interlude, but uh, Janice, uh, lots of stuff happening around the world. Uh, just got off the interview with Joe Rice Johnson, who's the chairman of Republicans Overseas for Russia. Uh, and there are concerns regarding the Mike Flynn uh, national security situation. I want to get your thoughts on that. Michael Flynn, White House National Security Advisor. Give us the uh, 411 on what went down. Yeah. So, 
basically what, what we think happened is that a few weeks ago before Trump was inaugurated, Florida Bay had a conversation with Russians, like with the Russian ambassador, um, talking about potentially easing sanctions. And then apparently didn't tell Pence about it when asked. Mm -hmm. Now, my personal feelings on this is that I don't personally have a problem if we ever talk to the Russians about using sanctions or not, even if he wasn't technically working per se. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can do whatever he wants to say, one private citizen to another. It's not that he had any power at that time. Mm -hmm. um, however, lying and you know, not being truthful with either the vice president or the president is not a good thing to do. And I definitely think that it is probably good he is leaving. And not that I think that anything, you know, okay, well, why is that? Um, but not that I think anything is, you know, hugely immense with this, but I think one of the most frustrating things on the administration is that these people have, you know, messed up in much greater. <laughs> yeah. They messed up much greater. And really, nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. It would just be like, oh, okay, well. They shouldn't have done that, but maybe not. So, yeah. I think that it is a good precedent to start now with if, you know, something looks fishy to, you know, deal with it right then and there, um, instead of, you know, having a whole bunch of potentially questionable things, um, you know, get together and make something. Now, now he didn't. Now, now he didn't do anything illegal. Am I right on that? I believe so. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Yeah. I feel like I've heard different. I feel like I've heard different things like like money, like money, like money. But oh, yeah. yeah, as an American citizen, he's having a conversation with an ambassador from Russia. Uh, he wasn't exchanging yeah. nuclear codes. He he wasn't proposing. Uh, any quid pro quos, you just hold a conversation. Uh, and but, right, which I think is like is like not illegal. I mean, yes, if he's talking, if he's not talking, talking about state secrets, okay, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if, if you're just having a general conversation, um, you know, in the future, I don't see how that could be could be a problem. Exactly, and. and and, and this is why I really wanted Joe Rice Johnson on tonight, um, because uh, people are turning to CNBC, they're turning to MSNBC, and all the other local stations, and they're getting some type of idea that uh, what was done by Mike Flynn uh, needs to be investigated to the highest levels, and, and that this is time for impeachment uh, hearings and things that. And it's nothing like that. It was simply a protocol that he should have followed that he did not. Uh, and as a result, it opened the door for people to question the legitimacy of him as a NSA, uh, a National Security Advisor. Uh, and I, I, I just want to ask you regarding this, Janice. Uh, at this particular time, is this what a nation needs to happen with a National Security Advisor? Uh, especially when you think of the last national security advisor that we had who went on five morning talk shows and told everyone that it was a video that caused Benghazi. Is this the worst that could have been done by a national security advisor? I personally don't think that, I mean, this is not a huge, I personally don't think that this is a huge deal. Um, yeah. I do think that I think a lot of us conservatives know that we don't really have to be conduct ourselves to a higher standard because we can't get away with anything, right? Exactly. And so I think that a lot of this, you know, having said, is probably 
a lot of that. Um, and that, yeah, it really doesn't rise to the level of what happened in the Obama administration. But I think some agree that there should have been way more consequences in the last eight years than it happened. But do you believe, Brandy, that uh, people under the Trump, Trump administration who just got in have to lie? Uh, is, 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 is it that oppressive coming in, either from Donald Trump or, or just really working with people who are left over from the Obama administration? Is it really that oppressive that you feel that you got to lie to protect yourself? I mean, I would hope not, mm -hmm. though I can totally see how eight years of the Obama administration working with intelligence what leads someone to... Uh, the first inclination would be to lie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, the other thing is that people are jumping on Donald Trump uh, for not focusing on Mike Flynn as much as he's focusing on the leaks that are coming out of the State Department, the Defense Department, uh, uh, the Justice Department. Uh, there, I mean, there are just an unlimited number of leaks all over the place. Uh, are those the Trump people leaking? Or, or is that something different here? Well, normally as I'm thinking, I tend to think that it's the intelligence agencies in the region. I um, need to use specifically what Trump to uh, I don't think it's a huge secret. Well, it might be a little bit of a huge secret. Um, some people are not in the D.C. area, but generally speaking, the intelligence Sector is rather liberal. Yeah. And I mean, they were not pleased with Trump's election. Mm hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, but. but mm hmm. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, we just, just wanted to think about that. It, it, because a lot of people across the country, there's some people across the country that believe uh, that in Washington, D.C., when a new administration comes in, everybody that was left from the old administration immediately resigned on Inauguration Day, and they went back home. But that's not the case. We have a bureaucracy that's set in place, and it's very liberal. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yes, you are. Mm, thank you. And I think that, you know, just the culture that has been growing over for eight years is not been good and has definitely, I think, led to like, a, lot, a lot of questionable behavior. Exactly. Exactly. Um, is this the end of leaks uh, under the Trump, or are we, looking, are, are we looking at the next few weeks as more individuals are getting in place, uh, being passed by the Senate? Uh, for advice and counsel to the president for their post. Uh, are we looking at this being the end of the leaks? Uh, or, or are we looking for more week leaks to come over the f next few weeks? I think there's going to be more leaks. I would probably even suggest that there might be leaks for, for years, um, depending on <clears throat> how things go. Um, I could see there being just kind of a perpetual underlying problem of relatively damaging information about Trump coming out from the intelligence sector. Mm -hmm. So, but your advice is to those who are listening tonight in the 695, 495, 295 corridor who hold positions as conservatives in the Trump administration uh, is to set their standard much higher uh, than even Trump might set it now? Yes, I, mean, I think that it's that all his guys do. And I think that this administration is conservative, Republican, but they have to be very, very careful. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's an annoying thing that there's this ridiculous double standard, but I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing to essentially have to be a bad reproach. Yeah. 
Wow. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, and I know that you all listen on the DL, uh, my Delaware listeners uh, out of Washington, D.C. The largest listenership actually is in Washington, D.C. to TECN. Um, I know you all are listening. And I'm just going to tell you on behalf of the Exceptional Conservative Network and many conservatives who are out there, you're going to have to hold yourself for the next four years to a standard that God would be pleased with. Not Donald Trump, I'm talking God. Uh, because any drop soap will be the inquiry or, or cause the inquiry of those on the left. Uh, you, you literally have to be picture perfect uh, from this point on. Uh, because anything less than that uh, is uh, will create a hellish uh, backdrop uh, for the administration. I uh, want to go uh, to a big meeting tomorrow. This is huge. Um, and it's the Netanyahu Trump meeting. Uh, it's the meeting that Israel has been waiting for for eight years. I, I want you to give us an idea uh, as to what that meeting is all about and what we should expect from it. Yeah, Netanyahu is coming here <laughs> tomorrow. <Yay. laughs> and he's not going to be meeting with Obama. Yay! He's going to have some celebration. <laughs> he won't be left at the dining room table. <laughs> um, he won't be sad. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I think I'm... I'm definitely optimistic. I think a lot of people who are supporters of Israel are optimistic with this meeting. Um, I do know that some of Trump's stances on Israel have been more muted since uh, the Biden government, but I don't think that if he, I guess if he had followed through with anything either you know, with the embassy, or being, you know, full support of the government, the government, I think that that would have been very jarring mm -hmm. to the world and especially the area. And I don't think that that's not necessarily a battle you have to fight right now. And I think that just leading at Yahoo, getting a dialogue going, Working to mend a relationship that has been in disarray for eight years, it is a very good place to start. And then work on some of those other things. Yeah. Um, that you like to do. do you expect for them to discuss uh, strengthening the dome uh, and also moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? I mean, I think that they'll probably discuss those things. Potentially, maybe not with the embassy, but um, I would imagine they'll, they'll probably discuss them. Uh, if something like doubt anything concrete will come from the discussion tomorrow. Um, I think this is just sort of a, hey, how are you doing? Nice to meet you kind of a conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think that we like to really talk about, you know, what are some and what can we do that do to support Israel? Yeah. But, you, know, so you, you, know what, you know what would be truly tremendous in order for us to move the news cycle and stop teetering around the idea of Russian intelligence and Donald Trump? It would be wonderful if he stood up to the podium yesterday with uh, Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu next to him, the Prime Minister of Israel, and say that we are officially making our announcement that we are moving our embassy from Tel Aviv uh, to Jerusalem, and it will be done by the end of our first year in office. I, I, wouldn't that, that would just shock the airwaves, wouldn't it? I would say we shock the airwaves. I don't think that that's likely to happen, mm -hmm. and I would probably... Say it, it, that's maybe not the first thing, the first order of business that should happen. Um, but yes, it is a shock. Man, can you imagine Hamas and yeah, the really cool <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Hamas and the, and the Muslim Brotherhood reacting? Oh my goodness. Uh, Janet, just one other thing. 
um, for this particular night, and that is the concern regarding assassinations around the world. Uh, it, can you give us uh, what's happening, and especially in Asia, and why we should be concerned here at home? Yeah, it's interesting. I think, and I guess bad things. I, I, I don't really know how to put it down, but um, <laughs> it, it was really interesting. Uh, what happened just Sunday? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, was that the North Korean leader, Kim Jong Un, and older half brother was assassinated. Wow. In, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> was he snoring or something? Uh, interesting enough, he <laughs> possibly. And it was, it was um, traveling under, you know, different. Um, but then the day somebody came up to him and in some fashion poisoned him, but he felt a little sketchy. Uh, I think that all signs in this case very likely point to Kim Jong Un being the one who basically assassinated his own half brother. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um. I had a conversation at Trailblazers weekend with someone who said that um, we need to do what we can to encourage China uh, as well as South Korea to begin closing in on um, Kim Jong Un, ill or whatever, uh, little Kim. Uh, do you think this is that particular time for Donald Trump to begin that? reach out to South Korea, uh, that, you know, enough is enough. Uh, we need to move forward uh, across that divide uh, and force North Korea to stop acting or misbehaving badly. Well, I think that we've needed to do that for a while. Mm -hmm. So, I, I definitely think that the sooner that North Korea can be, you know, essentially drawn into line a little bit more, would be good. And yes, South Korea and especially China do need to help with that. Wow. Situation. There's a lot of ires going and lots of pans on the fire. Uh, but I want to catch you on this one thing, and forgive me for delaying you, but I want to ask you regarding this. I received a note um, that there were, uh, from Meetup, that there were a number of groups that were being created uh, to protest Donald Trump. And uh, do you have any insight on that information? I do. It's a totally not international relations mm -hmm. related. Mm -hmm. But it's been a study. All the same. Yes, yesterday. I get an email from meetup.com, the, the actual company, saying, hey, so there's been all these organizations that have been popping up to resist Trump. Who sent your own today kind of a message? And so it's more than anything like this in the past. And even if the hashtag that they are gathering around is resist. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm kind of shocked and appalled that, that they thought that this was an okay thing to do, or that they should do it. Actually, in the email, we basically kind of suggested that they had a moral obligation to do this. Wow. Is more disturbing. So, so Meetup is allowing individuals, radical, uh, lethally jihadist-like liberals to get together to plan uh, attacks against, well, not attacks, well, protests. We'll say protests, but we know what they really are against the Trump administration. Yes. Uh, and yes. they feel that they have a moral duty to do this. Uh, has there been any yes. reaction from others uh, on that matter? I don't see a lot of reaction, actually. I think it's searching, you know, it's, it's a thing, what is going on, and we have some reaction from other conservatives who are also, like, appalled. Um, but in terms of its news readiness, I haven't seen a lot. Which is even more upsetting. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know that there's social media groups, and I, I thank God for uh, Janice because uh, she's making us aware of this. There are social media groups who are doing the they can to help stimulate violent protests against the Trump administration. What happened with Betsy DeVos at a D.C. public school uh, is just the beginning. Uh, the George Soros funded protesters, quote unquote protesters, what we know that they're violent assaulters, uh, are have only one interest and that is to create chaos uh, and destroy. And so there are feeder groups like Meetup uh, that are allowing them to coalesce, plan, uh, and carry out their activity. Okay. Encourage it, exactly. And and I, I rightly agree with you that we should all be pissed off uh, with resist, I uh, forget to be meetup dot dot org, uh, or dot group or whatever it is, uh, because they are help. They created one thousand resist meetup groups. The organization created one thousand, and they have over fifty thousand people signed up for that. Fifty thousand people whose job it is to create chaos in America. Uh, I, I, the only time I can think of a comparison would that be like jihadis in the Middle East. <laughs> I mean, it, to some degree, yes. Not quite as, you know, murderous, but um, definitely... Sinister. Definitely, cha definitely chaotic, definitely <laughs> anti-government, um, and it's just... It, the fact that apparently the primary message is resist is just... It, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's not even less so the better thing. No, you know, who just thinks that absolutely everything that this person is going to do is going to be a, a policy? Janice, I was listening to the New Hampshire Democrat Party chairman on uh, uh, FMDC, uh, Fox News Business Channel, uh, and he was stating that we sucked, we lost. Because we spend our time talking about you, Donald Trump, instead of giving America a better plan or a better idea. And that's why we lost. And he's the first Democrat that I've heard to be that honest uh, about why they lost uh, in the last election. It doesn't help when you have these individuals who are coming together uh, for valid opposition uh, to the Trump administration. And it doesn't help when you have social media aiding and abetting these particular criminals. Uh, your final words on that? My final words would be, no, it's certainly not helpful, and I think it's giving a very false sense of what people are thinking, um, you know, and where most of the population lies, because these are not people who thought about voting for Trump. These are not the, the normal middle of the world people. These people are very, very outside of, you know, what's normal and political thought. Yeah, this is and yeah. the fact that I seem to think that this is normal, that, that they need to agree with these people and, and cater to them is just going to be even more destructive to the Democratic Party. You're absolutely right. Listen, this is dangerous. What they're, they're playing with fire here. Uh, we should be concerned. Uh, thank you so much, Janice. Uh, God bless you. I look forward to you coming back next week. Okay. All about Have a great week. <laughs> yeah, you too. And, and just one more thing. Mm -hmm. Vegas. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> thank you. Have, have a great night. <laughs> oh man, I love my daughters. I really do. I love all my daughters, and and I, it's nothing. Nothing gives a father greater pleasure than to actually just uh, sincerely uh, bug the daylights out of them. Uh, that, that's the greatest joy for a father. I, I hope that you all grow up to be fathers of daughters. So that you might someday be able to bug the daylights out of some young woman. <laughs> Leave me alone, Dad. I'm thinking. I'll be right back with more of the best in Urban Conservative Talk right after these messages.
Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1 800 Pet Meds. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet, and we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from. Hi, my name is Bill Lawson of the Bill Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. We have a brand new show on at 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. We are bound to make you think. We are bound to make you see things differently. We are bound to push you into action for not only your community, but your country. That's the Bill Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. See you there. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think <laughs> I'm Shannon. And I'm you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are the right way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 79 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things from sports and politics, to food and entertainment, to money, family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1-800-PET-MEDS. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet. And we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four-way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from 1-800-PET-MEDS. Have you heard? It's a love story like no other. From God's heart to yours. And for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com. Everything Christian. Because it's our story, too. Hello, I'm Donovan Larkins, pastor of Spirit of Life Christian Center in Dayton, Ohio. But I'm also the director of Shekinah Ranch and the Shekinah Ranch Protecting Innocence Campaign. And today I want to just share with you some of our materials that we've developed so that you, can, you too can be part of promoting prevention, education, and safety awareness to youth. We have now our our Protecting Innocence t-shirt. Uh, it's a powerful marquee or billboard that you can purchase and wear yourself that brings awareness that children need advocacy. Uh, it's a powerful, powerful piece. Uh, it's simply a picture of that with this marquee here with, uh, with some additional wording on it and you will want to be a part of that. Uh, we have posters that any of you pastors or any of you community centers, you may want to uh, obtain some of these posters and post in the recreation center. It would be great to post this in the foyer of your church. It would be awesome for you to post this throughout the schools of, of, uh, of your community. Involvement is what's necessary. Involvement is what makes a difference. Uh, we know that in order for evil to triumph, all that is necessary is for good men and women to do nothing. And then we have these little marquees. You can take, you can order a hundred of them, you can order fifty of them, and you can pass them around to your family. You can pass them around at a family event or a local event that you're going to be at a festival or something. These are very handy, they're very cost efficient, and they make a powerful statement. They really make an impact. And then we have our Protecting Innocence um, ribbon. And in this package, it's not only just the ribbon, but it also has a message 
a safety awareness message, actually a tip. Uh, and the tip encourages parents to exercise scrutiny with the relationships that your children are involved with. Today, we see more and more children being victimized by teachers, by uh, coaches, and by other people, other supposedly trusted individuals. And we have to prepare our children if we plan for them to be safe. And then you will want to be involved with the overall Protecting Innocence campaign because we're making plans right now to build a, re a retreat recovery center on our 150-acre campus where Shekinah Ranch is, is housed. And you can get this brochure. It's, we, can, we can email it to you. Uh, that way there's no cost associated with it so that you can learn how you can join our Protecting Innocence teams. We are communicating with people globally, all over the world, that are interested in how together we can protect children from dirty, evil child molesters. We love to have you on board. We need your support. We want your prayers, and we welcome your financial contributions. Again, I'm Donovan Larkins, Chicana Ranch Protecting Innocence Campaign. And by the way, camps are coming. So call us so that you can register your child at 937-422-6029. We'll see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do me a great favor. Go directly to the red button uh, where it says Donate Today, Protect the Innocent. Help us raise $10,000 so that we can provide uh, support of Shekinah Ranch in Dayton, Ohio. I have to visit soon uh, because maple season has kicked in and I want to get me some fresh tilapia too. Uh, the Shekinah Ranch does a wonderful job through its agricultural business, aquacultural business, as well as agricultural business, uh, providing a place of rest and comfort from uh, the demise, spiritual demise, and moral uh, decay experienced by those children uh, who have been sexually abused and so he's had children there as young as three years old who have just come to hear from God an opportunity to uh, basically get their lives back in order not because of anything they did but because of everything that was done to them and so I'm asking you today Press that red button, donate today, protect the innocent, $5, $10, $25, however way. I'm not asking you to give me your mortgage, but what I'm asking you to do is help us raise $10,000 for the summer camp where he's going to take care of so many children who are broken and dispirited. And I'm also asking that you contribute because 30% of that, $3,000, will be going to Syracuse University in the name of Shanice Milton, uh, my 27-year-old daughter who was killed on the streets of Washington, D.C., an unsolved murder to date. Uh, Pastor Donovan Larkins and I are working together. All I'm asking is that you join us. Donate today. Protect the innocent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to bring attention to just a few things here on uh, Happy Valentine's Night. I know this is Valentine's Night, and everybody wants to uh, be with the one that they love and, and all that stuff and have someone spend fifty dollars on a big old teddy bear that will soon be recognized as the item that's taking up the most space in the living room I know I know how all this works out or whatever and you are going to go out of your way to buy her bonbons that will show up next week on her bum bum uh, and then she will take you to a dress shop and put on her size 14 you know the size 14 that she's always worn worn uh, and you look at her uh, very disruptly and she comes from behind the curtain and asks you how does this make my butt look uh, your responses might be the reason why uh, you're calling divorce court uh, for an appearance uh, so ladies and gentlemen and the flowers I, I'm telling you gentlemen I, I know it's nothing more aggravating for you 
than to see the dead flowers. I, I know you went out of your way. You you, you you worked hard on this. You ordered the flowers a week ago to be delivered to her, and she was so in love with them and everything. Um, and in uh, and, and and all of a sudden, you, you put them in a pot and added the water and that little thingy, a packet of. Uh, whatever it is that they give them, weed or whatever it is, a packet of weed for the flowers or whatever it is, uh, to sustain the flowers uh, for another four or five days. And, and then you come home, having spent 75 to to $100 on those flowers, and you, they're dead. They're dead, and no one's moving them. No one's moving the flowers. It's like there's some type of, uh, offense, some unwritten law or something that should you move the flowers, the dead flowers, if petals are drying up and brittle, 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 forgive me, <laughs> and I'm bitter because they're brittle, uh, and they're falling all over the floor and, and and you can't say anything because if you say something, then someone gets offended that you said something about her flowers, but they're not her flowers, they're dead. <laughs> They're not the same flowers that you brought home. That's, that's, oh. <clears throat> so, to say all that, to say this, I know some of you all are going through all of that right now. I want you to know tomorrow will come. I know. There's some people who have turned this into an art form, uh, have made this such a uh, pastoral manner some type of almost scriptural uh, oblige uh, Valentine's Day but I want you all to know there will be a tomorrow uh, there's some things that you need to know men if you did not strike oil if you did not find a platinum mine if you don't have a diamond mine don't keep kicking yourself because you couldn't afford the most expensive dress or the most expensive dinner or the most expensive anything else okay love in and of itself is the greatest expense of all because what it truly says when you love a woman what you're saying to her is that you're willing to go to the cross for her for every sin she's committed and I know I know if you're married, you know women don't make any sense. I didn't say sense. I said sins. <laughs> when you're married. So, obviously, a woman never makes a mistake. But, just in case you're willing to go to cross for her, that's what true love is about. The celebration of her should be so succinct that she doesn't see it in her credit card statement the next month. Uh, it should be of such value that it cannot be appraised. Now, if you really love a woman, here's three things that you should do. Number one, make certain that the first words out of your mouth to her in the morning is, I love you. I know. I understand. I, her breath isn't as minty as you thought it would be. Neither is yours. But let the first words come out of your mouth be, I love you. Number two, if that's the woman that you love, do everything that you can to spoil her. I, now, I know her daddy spoiled her. I understand that. Okay, and you got tired of her daddy spoiling her and everything. Uh, but guess what? That spoiledness made her tender and sweet. It made her love a Philistine who could not be loved by anyone. Yeah, you. So, spoil her. Not excessively, but do spoil her. If you're used to taking her to Arby's, go a step up in Wendy's for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 no. Treat her kindly is what I would say to you. Here's the third thing that you want to do for Valentine's Day. Make certain that she knows 
that every day is Valentine's Day. Uh, and the reason why I say that to you is that a lot of people have this understanding um, that you're supposed to go out of your way on this particular day and also on Mother's Day uh, and on her birthday and on your anniversary and those are the four biggest holidays of the year and Christmas and fifth, fifth Christmas, yeah, yeah. But the truth of the matter is she has borne your problems all year long. She has taken care of you when you were sick and weak. She's able to find that button that you lost in your own office. And you wonder how she's able to do that kind of thing. When she has had a long day, up since 4 o'clock in the morning, making her way home at 6, and she still has the audacity to make dinner for you. Remember her and love her 365 days out of the year. Valentine's Day should not be so special that if she doesn't get the bonbons and the flowers, she feels that she's been cheated. Ladies, I will talk with you now. For some godly, re ungodly reason, you believe that Valentine's Day is just for you. Just for me! Yeah, I know. You think it's all about you. Uh, first and foremost, you are no longer a size 2. <laughs> I know. You don't want to hear this. But you are no longer a size 2. Stop trying to fit in a size 2 dress when you're a size 10. Love the body you, you are. Love the body you are. Okay? Because he loves the body you are. All right, no man marries a woman without the expectation that gravity will hit her in her lifetime. Okay? Just as it hit his stomach, there are other areas that it will hit you. So don't feel that you have to parade around in something that you're no longer. Uh, also, women. Men need to hear, I love you too, but that's not really what a man wants to hear. There are two things a man wants to hear. I trust you, and I believe in you. Say that with me. I trust you, and I believe in you. If you can say those two things to a man, you have lifted before he leaves the house. Oh, my God. He's able to take on any group of giants and tear them down. Because he has a cheerleader in his corner. Uh, do not give opportunity uh, for someone at work to become his cheerleader. You better darn near be his cheerleader every single day. And it doesn't take you saying I love you to say it. I trust you and I believe in you. That's the cheerleading that a man wants to hear. Here's the third thing, women. If he could spend all of his money on you, would he make you happy? We take a pause here. No man will ever make a woman happy. He may do things to make you joyful in a moment, but never happy. Happy and the satisfaction of it is your responsibility. Go make yourself happy every single day. When you do that, the gifts that you get on Valentine's would just be the icing on the cake. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed your Valentine's Day. I hope that you've enjoyed this program. I want you to remember, if you don't remember anything else that I said, remember this. God bless America. It's time for America to bless God. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from the nation's capital. Good night and God bless. Love this group.